Hey there, it's Sydney with Tastefully Frugal. And in today's video, I am going to show you how to create SVGs inside Inkscape. Now, if you've never heard of Inkscape before, it's a 100% free design program that you can use to create SVG files, PNG files, JPEG files. It's a really great um, resource for any crafter. I've included a link in the description of this video to download it for free so that you can get started creating today as well. So if you've ever used any other design program to uh, create SVGs before, if you've ever used Photoshop um, or Illustrator, sometimes it can be difficult to know what you need to do to make your SVGs work in design space. So first of all, Inkscape is a whole lot easier to use. So if you're here for the first time wondering how to make SVGs and been frustrated with making SVGs before, you will be happy to know that this process is very easy. And I'm gonna show you in this video, if you get error messages in Design Space, how to fix that in Inkscape so that your SVGs are usable in Cricut Design Space. Since I know a lot of people who are creating SVGs do take them um, into Cricut Design Space. I'll also go over um, some grouping things and some ways to make your SVGs more user-friendly. This is really helpful if you, well, obviously if you are using them to create projects, but if you're selling them, it can really set you, um, make you stand out more from other SVG sellers if you make them really easy to use and you can group the images um, and pieces together. So I'll show you how to do all of that in the video. So let's just go ahead and jump on in and get started. This is what Inkscape looks like when you open it up. We are just going to start from the very beginning. So I'm going to click new document in that bottom right corner. Sometimes it takes a minute for it to open up, but let's first start with a uh, text SVG. Cause I feel like this is where a lot of people struggle and where there's a lot of issues with uploading to, to design space. So we'll just go over to this text um, option in the left uh, side and type basic text. We'll just do the word hello. And we're going to change the font. If you don't have this text toolbar here, just go up to the very top and click text and then text and fonts. Um, and it will open up this toolbar. And so we will do, I'm gonna do the Samantha font. I've linked this font um, in the description of the video. It is included with a Creative Fabrica account and it's one of my absolute favorite fonts to use. So we have our font selected. We'll just change the font size so that we can actually see it and we can make some changes if we need to. We'll just make it a little bit bigger. But let me show you, if you were to upload this SVG at this point, what would happen in Design Space? So we'll just go to File, Save As, and we'll just give it a basic name like Hello. We'll just save it to our desktop. You can save it wherever you want. Um, and then we will open up Cricut Design Space and go to Upload Images, click Upload, and we'll select our design. Now, it, you will get this message that says it can't import your design, and if you click continue, nothing will be there. So let me show you how to fix this. Let's go back to Inkscape. We haven't changed anything, but we are going to click our design, and then you'll click path, and then click object to path. So this is going to change it to an object instead of text. So now we can go ahead and go to file, save as, and we will just give it a similar name. Let's just say hello word one and click save. We'll head back into Cricut Design Space, go to upload and upload images and select our new design, the hello word one. And there is our design. Now let me show you what this design looks like at this point if you upload it into Design Space. We'll just click add to canvas and as you can see, it is in multiple different layers. I'm gonna change the color so you can see it a little bit better because sometimes it's hard to see in black, but all of the pieces are separate. And so if you were to click make it at this point, it would not cut the word hello. It would just cut every single, like every separate letter, which of course you can weld it or attach it in design space. But let me show you how to do that in Inkscape so it's easier to use um, and easier if you sell designs for your users to use. So you'll just go up to path and then select combine. And that is going to combine all of the different letters into one path. So let's go to file, save as, we'll do hello word two this time so we can see the difference. Go back into Cricut Design Space. We'll click upload, upload image, select our image of the hello word two. Looks the same. 
for the most part, you can see a difference and I'll show that to you in just a second. But when you add it to canvas, instead of having multiple layers, you only have the one layer. So this is a step in the right direction, but you can see here on the, let me get rid of this um, blue design, but on the black design, you can see here that the edges uh, or the letters, the ends of the letters, there we go, um, are cut off in the next letter. So if you're in design space, obviously you'd weld it, but let's do that in Inkscape. So I'm going to undo making it a path and we're gonna take this image back to text. And then we're gonna do the fill and stroke tab. We're gonna give it no fill and change the stroke, this first option, which is a black stroke. That way we can see the outline so we know what we're doing. And then we're just going to go back up to path and we are going to select union. And this is basically the weld feature in Inkscape. So it makes it so that the edges of the uh, letters aren't cutting into the next letter. So we'll save it again. We'll do hello word three this time. And let's open this one up in Cricut Design Space to show you the difference. All right, we'll just go to upload. We're gonna be pros at uploading images in Design Space by the end of this video. Um, so hello word three. It looks weird here, but I promise it looks totally normal on the canvas. Um, just select this upload and add it to your canvas. And there you go. Let's go ahead and change the color to blue so you can see it better. Um, but as you can see, we have one in one layer, but the letters are all welded together. Um, so it's perfect, ready to cut. Now, let me show you how to use glyphs or swatches with Inkscape. So let's get rid of this. We're gonna be using the same Samantha font, but you're going to want to search on your desktop, character map. When the character map window pops up, just make sure you have your font selected, and then you'll want to make sure that advanced is selected as well. So once you have your advanced menu pulled up, you want to click group by and then select Unicode subrange down at the bottom. And then at the next window, scroll all the way down to the bottom and select private use characters. This is uh, making it so you're only going to see the glyphs for the Samantha font instead of all the glyphs on the computer. We're gonna do the same hello word, but we are gonna add like a swatch to that first H. So just um, pick the design that you want and then click, click select and copy. Then we'll just go back to Inkscape and we'll go like we're adding text again and then just um, paste that H in to Inkscape and you can see you have that swatch. And then we'll just add the rest of our word hello, E-L-L-O. We'll go back to text and we'll just highlight those last letters and we'll change the text to the Samantha font so it's all the same. You can get to see the preview down here um, and then just click apply and you'll have um, the word all in Samantha font. So let's go ahead and just select the um, select our word and make it bigger so we can actually see what we are doing. And then we will go to, again to that fill and stroke tab. Um, on the fill option, just select the X so there's no fill and the stroke paint, just select that second option. And then we will go up to path and on the path menu, once again, we will click union and that makes them all welded together. So let's take this a step further. We have our text. Let's add some other aspects to our design. So I have some butterflies that I got from Creative Fabrica that I downloaded to my computer and we are going to add these to Inkscape. Now, when you open a new image in Inkscape, it opens it in a separate tab. So what we need to do, and sometimes it takes a minute for it to add, is we need to take this butterfly and first of all, we're gonna make it smaller because right now it is huge. So we're just gonna size it down. Um, just look at the size of your hello design and kind of um, base the second design on a similar size. We still might need to resize it, but that's okay. So we'll just make this a little bit smaller. Make sure that you lock the aspect so it doesn't make like super wide or super thin. And then you'll just click copy, go back to your first window um, and then just click paste and there is your butterfly. And you can go ahead and resize that um, so that it fits um, more of the design you want and you can move it around, decide where you want to put it. 
Um, and I'm actually going to make a doormat with this design. So I want to add a few more butterflies. It's going to be kind of an Encanto theme since that's my girl's favorite movie right now. Um, but you're just, we're just going to hit copy and paste. And I'm going to add several different butterflies. And you can use the rotate tool up here and just rotate them, um, you know, clockwise, counterclockwise. You can flip them horizontal or vertical. But we're just going to add four or five butterflies here. I just zoomed out so I can see more um, of the design that I'm working with. Um, let's go ahead and add, let's say, two more. We'll just rotate them a little bit. But at least this way, they're all the same size. So once you have your design how you like it, let's say, um, let's say we're, we're done. So we are going to go to Save As. And then we will go ahead and rename this. We'll change this one to Hello Butterflies. Save and go to Cricut Design Space to see what this looks like at this point if we upload it. We can get rid of our two hello words. We don't need that anymore. But just click Upload, Upload Images, uh, Browse, and we'll select our newest file and add it to our canvas. Everything looks good. So we can click OK. And then let's go ahead and add this to our canvas. So once we add it to the canvas, one, it's very big. So we'll go ahead and resize this. Again, make sure that you have that uh, dimensions locked. I didn't hear, but I went ahead and changed it. Make sure it was locked um, this time. And we'll resize it so we can see everything on our screen. And you'll see that the hello is one layer, but those butterflies and their little antennas are all separate layers. So we need to change that. To do that, you'll just click on the butterfly, click, click path, and then click combine. And that will make that image all one layer. So we're gonna do the same thing, path combine for all of the butterflies um, to make them all one layer so that uh, we can have basically six layers instead of, what is that? Each layer is three, so it'd be like 18 layers. Six layers is definitely easier to work with. And then we're just gonna select save, save as, and we'll do the same thing. We'll call this Hello Butterflies 1. And let's take a look in Cricut Design Space when we upload this, what it looks like. So we'll just go to upload, upload image, browse, and select that Hello Butterflies 1, add it to our canvas. Again, I know it looks funky on here in the preview, but it comes, it looks totally normal on the canvas. So you'll add it to your canvas. And there, oops, let's go ahead and get rid of this other one that we don't need. Um, we'll resize the new design so that it is easier to see on one screen. We'll get rid of this layer, the first one that we uploaded. And then now, like I said, we only have the six layers, which is so much easier when um, we want to cut things out. And again, if you sell SVGs, this is super helpful for your customers. We can even take it a step further. And if you wanted to, you could change the color of the butterflies. So you just go ahead and select your image and then down at the bottom, just select the colors. If you wanted to do custom colors, you can do that here as well. But we'll just go ahead and pick colors that are um, on the um, color line down at the bottom. We'll leave hello black. And then let's go ahead and last design, we'll go to file. Um, oh, actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and size this down so it's not so big in design space. So we just made it a little bit smaller um, and we can move our design over if we want. Just leave it where it is. Just go to file next, save as, and we'll do hello butterflies three, or actually we'll just keep it as it is. Um, and then just go ahead and say, it's okay to replace the image or the file, I should say. Then you'll do upload, upload image, browse, select that last file or the newest file. Again, looks totally weird, I know, but as yeah, as you've seen, it turns out totally fine on the canvas. I don't know why the preview and design space is so off. But once you add it to canvas, we'll get rid of this one. There you have all of your designs um, and the different colors. We covered a lot of information in this video, and that is just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many design possibilities available in Inkscape, but I hope that you found this video helpful. I hope that you learned how to create SVGs, or if you found this video because you were frustrated not knowing how to create SVGs or having issues with uploading it to Design Space, I hope that I answered those questions for you and that you can feel confident with creating your SVGs, whether you use them in Cricut Design Space, whether you use them with any other uh, personal cutter or whether you sell them. But if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. 
Also, let me know if there's any other tutorials that you'd like me to share um, with Inkscape, but also with the design process, with creating SVGs or PNG files. I did link um, in the description of the video as well a tutorial that I did with Canva showing you how to make um, PNG files for sublimation. So if that's something you're interested in, check that video out as well. But if you like this video, I would love to have you give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to Tastefully Frugal for more Cricut and sublimation crafts, tips, tricks, and tutorials. Have a great day.